Welcome everyone to the Pro Football Doc Podcast Week 16. I'm Thomas Casali with Pro Football Doc David Chow. Doc, it's the last podcast before the holidays. Look, I got my uh, Charlie Brown Christmas shirt on. Um, we're all ready to go, but... Doc, I gotta say, I gotta tell everybody what happened this week. We were watching the late games, and uh, you know, I, I get on and I say, "Hey, Doc, we're not gonna have anything for the podcast." And you said, "Don't worry, Thomas. It's been my experience over the years. We'll always have injuries." And then, what I would call probably the oddest game of the NFL season took place: the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. Just a lot of crazy stuff happened in that game, but. Three major injuries for the Buck stock. Um, Leonard Fournette with the hamstring, uh, Chris Godwin with the knee, and then Mike Evans with the hamstring. I know there's different um, variations of how serious they are, so why don't you kick us off by running through those injuries? Well, you didn't give me the heads up on the Christmas. I guess I could have <laughs> thought about it, but but I am at work work, so uh, yeah, at my house. But in any case, yeah, and look, I've been doing this the pro football doc stuff for a while now. And like I told you, Thomas, there's never a shortage of things to write about. Right. Talk about. Even in the off season, there mm-hmm. never is. I mean, I have never run out of things to, to talk about, etc. So as far as these injuries go, um, you know, it's, we said in real time here that, uh, you know, Chris Godwin, right? He got hit. I get it. There's a lot of discussion of is that a bad hit? I mean, you can't hit him high, you can't hit him low. Where you, I mean, where yeah, are you going to hit? Do you, him? I mean, it's hard. It's hard for it's defenders. Hard. You know? and, it's, and, and, and it's not like you're aiming at his knee. You're just like I'm trying to make a tackle. You know, right? And, uh, and I, I know Doc just from youth football. That's how you teach tackling now. You teach tackles low. You know, you tried to get him in the midsec, but you know, you don't teach tackling high anymore. So guys are going lower, and I know a lot of players are upset about that. Yeah, and, and you know this. I mean, most players say, I'd rather have you, have you hit me up high than hit me down low. I mean, but it's football. So he gets his uh, knee caught a little bit, as you see here on the video. A little bit of a hyperextension, but really valgus force to that right knee. And, uh, you know, it's a clean hit. It's just unfortunate, the timing, that his foot was on the ground and caught at the time. And so now it's been confirmed what we said live in game uh, at sixscore.com and uh, on Twitter there, MCL. And it's already said he's going to miss the rest of the regular season and back for the playoffs. The question is when in the playoffs? Week one, bye week, or right? Or that's uh, that, that's what I was going to bring up, Doc. It's vi- it's probably very important now for the Buccaneers to get that bye week. Yeah, it definitely would. Uh, it definitely would help. Now, <laughs> the scheduling gods have it in their favor. They go Panthers, Jets, Panthers. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't probably yeah. draw it up. I mean, too much better Tom, Tom Brady gets the schedule his way. I mean, uh, who would have thought, right? <laughs> well, that if Brady gets the schedule his way, maybe uh, maybe the poor services <laughs> on the sideline will be grateful. <laughs> right. I mean, it's amazing. The guy leaves the NFC, the AFC East, and they still give him the Jets in the final two weeks. That guy's played the Jets the final two weeks of the season like 15 times in his career. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he was pretty frustrated last night. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Like I said, it was an odd game. Doc, one thing I just want to ask you quick about Godwin before we uh, move on is I, I always find it amazing that the way people look at injuries, and I brought this up before. With I'll bring it up again, William Floyd, the day I learned that walking off means nothing. Like, Godwin walks off, and people who've followed the NFL for 15 years think that's like a – like a telling sign of anything. I always bring up the day William Floyd walked off the field. He had, and that's when I was younger, and I was like, oh my God, he's okay. Two torn ACLs, right? So (laughs) you can walk off the field, and I I always, I just find it odd that like these NFL writers are like, well, he walked off, you know, that's that's a good sign. Actually, Doc, it's not really a sign of anything, is it? Well, I mean, I guess it's a sign that you don't have a broken leg. I mean, yeah. you know, in two pieces. I mean, so there, there's... But in terms some... of MCL, ACL, you can walk off the field, correct? Yeah, and and this and that's part of what the mantra, you know, I say judge the injury, not the reaction yes. to the injury. Whether you walk off or are carted off is a reaction to the injury. It's not the injury itself. Uh, other notable examples, I mean, Bo Jackson walked off and never played football. Never played, yeah. Right uh, from his hip injury, 
Uh, something that's germane to today was uh, two weeks ago, Adam Thielen walked off, mm-hmm. got taped, was running up and down the sideline, yeah. stayed on the sideline. We said he's not coming back. He's missing the next week. And he's still out for tonight's Monday night football game against the Bears. So it's hard to, to judge that. And I'm not sure you know this story, but I'll tell it for some other people. The whole walking off thing by announcer is for some way how I got into this. So after 17 years NFL head team position, I'm watching football for the first time from home because I had got the, the little boy-girl twins. They're nine now. That's how long ago it was. But they were, you know, less than one at the time. Uh, they were approaching one at the time. And uh, watching TV, my wife sitting next to me, guy goes down i should go try and figure out who it was again i don't remember and i'm talking at the tv the tv announcer says that looked bad but i think he's going to be okay because he walked off I, and i said no he's not his season's done he right. it. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's what my wife told me and i, and I promised her because she makes me say this she said it kindly tell it to someone who cares and sign me up for twitter and uh, so forth. But so in some ways, that phrase, uh, they're okay because they walked off, is actually responsible for me. For, for this podcast. Being into right <laughs> to doing this uh, kind of random uh, thing. So I, I, it, it is what it is. Well, let's go to another injury, Doc, that um, you, you deemed very serious uh, as soon as it happened. Uh, you know, when I, uh, Leonard Fournette, which I think is a really big injury for the Bucks, because I don't think Tom Brady likes Keyshawn Vaughn or Ronald Jones at all. I mean, the look on Brady's face when he talks to those two, you can just see the disdain. That must be why they don't play much, because they must miss blocks or not run right routes, because Brady was extremely frustrated with both of those two, and Fournette has been the bell cow back for that team. So what are you seeing with Fournette, and when do you think he'll be returning? Well, it's been reported as minor, but any hamstring on a skill position player that has to move is not minor. And the definition of minor is when it happens to uh, some, someone else's player, not your player, right? Yeah. And so if you look at the video here, Fournette, um, the issue is he gets in a very, what I call, a hyper uh, flexed position of his hip with his knee extended, almost like a water ski type position. Those are usually more proximal hamstring strains. Uh, Minor, sure, but my definition of minor hamstring is it's not torn, it's not six, eight weeks. So that's good. But minor, definition of minor is not he's playing in week 16. I mean, uh, when this happened, and we're foreshadowing a little bit at sixscore.com, we posted last night in game that between Godwin, Evans, and Fournette, all three were more likely to miss the re- end of, of, miss through the end of the regular season than all three of them to come back the next week. We know Godwin's not. I don't think uh, Fournette's coming back next week. He might be two or three weeks if he's lucky. And uh, Evans, now Evans is a different story. We didn't see as much on video. I'm sure it's going to be said to be minor. Evans has had a history of hamstring issues that he has tried to play through. If you remember at the beginning of last season, we didn't think that he'd play through early, and he did, and everyone went, ah, you're wrong, and I think he had, I don't know, like two catches for a yard or something, you know, as a decoy in week one last year. So Evans probably is the first one back, but I don't know that he's effective first week he's back. Then Fournette, then Godwin. But I still say that the likelihood is all three miss this next week at least, if not more. So we'll see. Okay, yeah, and um, I know some reports are saying Evans might be able to play, but you're right, it's early in the week. You know, this is kind of what what comes out here. So it'll be interesting because Tampa Bay, like, like we said, Going for that number one seed, we'll see how quickly these guys come back and uh, if they're out for the playoffs. But uh, they did not look good on offense without those three. But obviously the Saints give them a little bit of trouble. I don't know if the Panthers and the Jets and those type of teams will be able to do the same. So, Doc, let's go to another that was a scary injury. But again, I must be spending too much time with you because... Teddy Bridgewater got hurt for the Broncos, right? Now, and I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that's not a serious. The guy's had concussions. He slammed his head. 
But then I see, like, again, NFL writers on Twitter, like, they're talking about him like the guy's dead. Like, uh, you know, thoughts and, pr- like, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm not Doc, but I've been around him long enough to think this is a concussion. You know, you know, it's a concussion. They're taking precautions. But, again, similar to walking off the field, Doc, I think guys, when they get carted off, boarded off, it, it makes people go to, like, a darker place and think that this, the injury could be more serious. Perfect example was the Donald Parham injury, which you nailed correctly from the second it happened. Concussion, uh, you know, he had he was shaken on, on TV. <laughs> you had uh, Joe Buck talking about the weather. And, but, um, you know, again, that's why make sure you go sixscore.com, at ProFootballDoc on Twitter. Watch these videos because, Doc, I know our motto don't judge the reaction, judge the injury. So let's talk about Teddy Bridgewater um, with his right. history so we'll, of concussions. We'll look at Teddy's play right here a little bit. And uh, scrambles out of the pocket, leaps, gets flipped, and then driven into the ground. And he fumbles because he's out. He's out on yeah. the ground. You can see how his arm's trapped. You don't trap your arm like that if you're awake. And and I think what people were concerned about is look at how his chest was heaving there. Um, mm-hmm. That's Ag- what we call agonal breathing or labored breathing and that typically does happen with a concussion when you're knocked out i'm not poo-pooing it you got to be careful the reason yep. why the uh, athletic trainer like held and immobilized his neck is until you know for sure because like we actually on tv get a better view than on the sideline like i've been there right for years uh, on the sideline, you're running out there. I mean, you saw it from 40 yards away, maybe, and uh, maybe not didn't have a clean line of sight. So you don't know if his neck was injured or not. So to approach him that way is the right way. But I think that scares some people. And to see his chest heaving and difficult breathing, his arm trapped under him, I understand how people were worried about him. And then here comes the ambulance and all the stuff. And then you have literally, uh, it looked like 200 people on the field. Both sidelines yeah. emptied for him. Good respect for Teddy, the whole deal. But I'm not poo-pooing concussions, all right? I mean, with CT is a whole different story. But it did seem like a fairly, you know, typical... I mean, there's different varieties of concussions. And I'm not begrudging anyone from going off on a stretcher, but, you know, being safe. But going off on the stretcher and the whole deal adds a whole nother level to it. But here's the thing about Teddy. Earlier this year, he had a concussion. Made it back for the next game. That's not happening here. Yeah, not because of the more severe nature, because but because of that, but because also it's the second one. There's no way he's playing next week. Uh, it's not impossible that he gets shut down for the season. Okay, but there's no way he's playing next week. It's Drew Lock for next week at least, and hopefully, uh, no other residual, no big deal for Teddy after that. Not poo pooing concussions, but let me tell you, the injury that I feared in the NFL, and knock on wood, thankfully never happened, is paralysis. It never happened with me. The head injuries, I didn't love. Are you sure they're scary? Maybe you're jaded and you deal with them too much. You have to treat them real and you gotta take care of the guys, but it's the paralysis ones that I worried about. So I always did my best to try and clear guys on the field. And uh, I, I don't begrudge anyone for choosing to go to a medical board. That's just the way it is. But let me tell you, in my career, I only put one guy on a spine board. And that was because uh, I still remember the place. It was in Cincinnati. Uh, neck injury. He had neck pain. And when I first approached him, he said he couldn't feel both his hands. And I was like, oh. And I felt his neck. Do you have neck pain? Yes. And I felt the bad thing he had hurt. I said, you're going on a spine board. I mean, uh, I, I can't tell anything else. Um, and uh, Cincinnati was the only team in the league inside the stadium that had an MRI. So they're closed on Sundays. They're open to the public the rest of the week. And I said, oh, look, can we get an MRI? So we went straight and got an MRI. He never went to the hospital. He got cleared by the MRI. But, you know, as soon as we got there to the MRI, there's a player personnel person there a player a liaison person from him I got his mom's phone number and I called the mom and said this is what's happening with your son and this is where we're at because it's very scary uh, yeah for 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 people and uh, thankfully he was fine but uh, you know um, that's my one little story I, I took pride I wasn't trying to be a cowboy I just felt for players their families 
you know, and, and their teammates that uh, I wanted to be very careful who I put on a spine board. Not cavalier about it. I mean, you got to put people on. You got to put people on. And so, Doc, let's go back to the Parham injury real quick, just because, to, now, like most people, that one I was a little bit concerned about because I, I learned a new phrase this week called posturing, right? The uh, So can you just ex- – and I you know I, I, I actually said to you, you said concussion. I said, how sure are you on that? And you said 100%, and <laughs> that's what it was. But that one looked a lot scarier because of what he did on the stretcher. Can you just explain to people what posturing is in case we see it again? Well, when he first got knocked out with his head on the back of the ground, both his, his hands were clenched and his, and, and his elbows were stiff, right? Some people have heard of a fencing response. This is a variation of that. The posturing is the posturing of the extremities, you know, different signal being sent. Uh, decorticate or decerebrate posturing, um, uncontrolled locking rigidity in the arms or legs. That's the result of a concussion. Unfortunately, and I think what really freaked people out and led to the cold comment was the little bit of shivering or shaking of the <laughs> arms afterwards. That could have been either a temporary anoxic or post concussive type mini seizure type situation. Not true epilepsy seizure, but seizure like activity post concussive that he's experiencing. If you notice when they got him off on the spine board, his face mask was off because he also had a little bit of that agonal breathing and you gotta make sure that you protect the airway. Uh, and that's that's the most life-saving thing. And, and as scary as it was, uh, I mean, to me, as I, I was actually surprised when you said, how sure are you it's a concussion? I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, 100%. I mean, that, that's a concussion. And, and, and here's the thing, I get, there's been a lot of discussion about announcers speculating. They're not supposed to speculate on injuries. And look, I like Joe Buck. Here's the thing. Announcers speculate all the time. Should John Harbaugh gone, have t- gone for two there or not or kick the field goal? Is that or not a touchdown? But announcers, TV's gotten smarter. If there's a refereeing decision, instead of speculating what the challenge will be, they bring in the referee guy and the referee says, based on this, 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 this is what it might be or this is what it will be. Maybe there's a role for medical. Look, I I don't wanna be in New York. I don't wanna go do all this stuff, but in a Donald Parham situation, just to say, he's gonna be okay, or this is what it is. Yeah, like like the officials. Like the, yeah. they have, I, you I like know, the, and yeah. the, the, they go to the officials, they say, okay, what do you see in here? I think it's a great idea to have a, a medical person. I mean, then you're breaking, it would be good for the networks because they're breaking it right there. Like you, you would have said Godwin, he's not coming back. He, he, that's MCL, you know, instead of everybody <laughs> trying to figure out what it is. Uh, it's a good idea, I think. Help well, fantasy and, and, players. And, and, help and by members. the way, when, when people ask, well, what exactly is pro football doc and what do you do? You know how I explain it? I say in one in one quick phrase, I say, I'm the medical Mike Pereira. Yep. So no, I think it makes sense sometime in the near future, especially Doc with sport with you know, the the NFL all you know in the last year has has done a 180 on sports betting, right? It used to was oh, going to fix games, oh, we can't have it corrupt. <laughs> now they got uh, now they got seven uh, partnerships with different sports books. So I think it's something we could see in the future. So that some one guy we know who's out for the year. Just want to get a quick thought on it. Um, you again, you you've got it right as it happened. Sterling Shepard, uh, Achilles. Uh, uh, when can when do you think he comes back next season? Oh well, actually, we have some breaking news here on Chris Godwin. Forget the MCL. Apparently, Bruce Arian says Godwin also tore his ACL. So he's done. He's done. Done. That's just breaking news that uh, Jacob just showed me straight off of Twitter literally one minute ago. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, the looks like uh, looks like the Bucks aren't going to care what Antonio Brown fakes. <laughs> He's going to be playing now. <laughs> yeah. Well, so much for the uh, you're on a zero strike rule, right? Right. I mean, with Evans and God went out for the season and Evans questionable. Welcome back, AB. How you been? Yep. And, exactly. And heck, uh, for whatever reason, AB seems to be able to make a, a TB12 smile. 
Right. I think uh, Brady likes him. So, I mean, I listen, the team's loaded at receiver, but obviously Chris Godwin is going to be a huge loss moving forward. So, again, is Doc Shepard, uh, I don't know, beginning of next season, middle of next season, how long is that torn Achilles going to keep uh, him I out? think you can make it back to the beginning. If you look at the video here, like typical eccentric load, I mean, that's why that one, uh, you know, in the room here, it took us literally – one replay in about three seconds to make the call once we looked at found the right play and looked at it pretty clear achilles tendon rupture it's been confirmed surgery he can make it back for the start of next year but it's going to require some work you know especially for a a, a speed guy like that right a, a skill position player uh, you know, like eric fisher did a great job coming back for the colts at left tackle coming off his Achilles, late in the season Achilles. But he plays in, in a confined box. In space yeah. like that, that's that's going to be harder. Not impossible, but harder for the start of the season. It's going to be a tough one. All right, Doc. Well, a player who might not have mattered a few weeks ago who has really come on since the Derrick Henry uh, injuries, Dante Foreman, for, uh, for the Titans has helped fantasy owners out, hurt his ankle. I mean, he finished with 22 rushes, 108 yards. Uh, he's been playing well. Said in the post game he got rolled up on a, a couple of times. Uh, do you see anything major there for, for Foreman? Well, uh, I'm sure he's going to be miss some practice time. I mean, whether DMP or LP. But uh, I didn't see any, did not see anything there other than some aggravation of previous sore ankle that would say, oh, that's a high ankle, or oh, he's a significant ankle this that the other he's out Uh, I think he has a good chance to play next week all right well doc that's uh like we said we didn't have too many big injuries this week uh, thankfully but a couple of guys a couple of quarterbacks I want to talk about one of the biggest injuries this week obviously was Lamar Jackson um suffering from a bone bruise Tyler Huntley's played well in his absence. They lost to the Packers, but they had a shot to win it at the end with a two-point conversion. The to me, Doc, bone bruise is similar to turf toe. It's uh, it doesn't. I don't think it gives the magnitude of the injury. I remember years ago, if I heard someone had a bone bruise, I was like, oh, he'd be fine. But it can be a little bit more serious than that. And you think there's there's questions about uh, Lamar playing this week, correct? If you had to ask me right now, I'd say he does not play this next week. Okay. Sunday early morning, Adam Schefter is where I saw it from, broke the news that it, Lamar Jackson had a bone bruise and it wasn't even a low ankle sprain. Now we said all along, we knew it wasn't high, but we didn't know what it necessarily was per se. We assumed low ankle sprain. And that makes sense that it's a bone bruise because if it's a low ankle sprain, Lamar would have practiced some last week. You can work your way through a low ankle sprain. A bone bruise, you just need to rest it. And stay off of it and so he was dnp all last week i think lamar is going to be dnp all this week and be labeled questionable again right uh, uh, look uh, coach john harbaugh i mean he's one of those coaches that utilizes coach speak and hides behind health he's saying already oh lamar you know he's trending well he should be okay to play i think he's going to make it uh, I, but i don't think he's going to the timeline of a bone bruise um, is different. Uh, it's usually weeks, and it's just rest in time. There's not much you can do to to uh, speed it up. Of course, it makes his life easier that Tyler Huntley has played so well, but I don't think Lamar plays this week. I, I took a look at the FanDuel line this morning. It's uh, Bengals minus two and a half. Yep. I think when the news trickles out, it's going to uh, flip across the three. Yeah, the huge game for the Ravens this week in terms of playoff hopes. They go to Cincinnati, like you said, right now Bengals two and a half. And as we mentioned last week on the podcast, Lamar is such a unique quarterback because other quarterbacks run, but nobody runs quite like him. Um, He's almost like a receiver playing quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see how that trends during the week. Make sure to go to sixscore.com. We'll have all the updates, all the all the updated six scores. Uh, remember, it's not just not just Lamar, Doc. The, as I always say, make sure you look at all our field views because the Ravens were down five cornerbacks um, this past week. And that, uh, as you pointed out during the game, 
you thought they were going to have a lot of trouble in the second half stopping Aaron Rodgers because the pass rush early on was getting there, but any time Rodgers had a second to throw, he was picking them apart. So that's going to be interesting when they play Joe Burrow and the Bengals coming up on Sunday. Uh, so, yes, sir. The, so, yeah, make sure you go to sixscore.com. We will have all the updated six scores, and I'm guessing that the Bengals will be up overall for a team probably still pretty low. The, another quarterback, Doc, this has been – I brought this to your attention a couple weeks ago. I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, obviously, I've seen a lot of Dak Prescott, and I see a lot of the banter on Twitter that goes on. And there's been a lot of talk about his play – before and after that calf injury. Now, in weeks one through six, he had a PFF passer grade of 87.6, 16 TDs, four interceptions, and a 73.2 completion rate, and was one of the favorites to win um, the MVP. Then he had that injury. And weeks nine through five, he's nine through 15, 69.2 uh, passer rating on PFF, nine TDs, six interceptions, and 64.9 completion rate. And also his yards per attempt has dipped two yards below what it was before the injury. So, Doc, I'm just wondering, I mean, just from my amateur eye, I've noticed him rolling out a little bit. He hasn't been nearly as accurate. Are you seeing anything with Dak Prescott? Well, I mean, my first question to you is, okay, I did see a play last week uh, against Washington where he rolled out to the right, he threw over defender, he awkwardly stepped, his footwork was off. Uh, to me, he was, he was favoring the right calf there, or at least not exploding off of it. And he threw a horrible ball to, mm-hmm. to a Cole Holcomb for a pick six. I mean, just like horrible. And uh, that one stood out a little bit. But other than that, I mean, you might be able to say better being a Cowboys fan in terms of how are they using him differently? Are they rolling him out the same? Now, I think overall this year they've been more protective of him and him more in the pocket, probably coming off of the ankle injury from last season. Uh, But I don't know if you've seen a change pre-calf and post-calf about how they're utilizing him. I, I don't see a ton of plays that always went off. We'll look at a play here um, where, you know, he drops back in the pocket, he plants well and throws, but that you would expect. He underthrows it a little bit, but I didn't see anything in particular on the calf. Maybe he didn't step in the throw. But uh, in general, I think he's maybe rolling out less. Here's another play where he's rolling out, uh, drops back here. And he rolls out, and he gets strip sacked. I mean, you could say perhaps he's a little less athletic than usual. Uh, yeah, there there might be something there. I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, he's still the man there. Yeah, and the the, the only the two things I've noticed one is I I see him under throwing deep balls more, and and Dak's a pretty yes. accurate deep ball thrower. So that would be the one thing. The other thing I've noticed is the play he actually got hurt on last year that fake to the running back, and then Dak takes it around the end. Um, they haven't run that at all recently, and I know they, they like to run that now and again, especially on like a third and two because everybody collapses in on Zeke, and he takes it. He hasn't run the ball at all. So, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I mean, the, I mean, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe the Cowboys are just playing tougher competition, but, you know, they've had some injuries at receiver too. But I do think a little bit on those deep throws it's affecting them. But uh, as, as we know, I'm not a doctor, so... <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how. Uh, keep an eye on it. We'll see. We'll see if he's because Dak rolling out is one of his best plays when he rolls out of the pocket and, and gets the ball out. So if they're if they're doing less of that, then that's going to hurt the offense, obviously. Well, Doc, we're going to close on something. I'm just praying to the Lord's above. We don't have to talk about anytime again soon. <laughs> uh, all the COVID issues in the NFL. It's. Uh, it's gotten worse again. Um, the NFL. This is you have an interesting take on this, so I, I want to want you to tell everybody your thoughts. It seems like the NFL has gone one way on testing, and everyone else is going the opposite way. So tell me your thoughts on the new COVID policy. Okay, I feel like it's. I don't love talking about COVID, right? Um, but I feel like every time we talk about it, I have to say like. I'm just talking about COVID in terms of making the observations 
and COVID in relation to sports. I'm not trying to be political in any way, shape, or form, get vaccinated, uh, move on, etc. But clearly, if you look at what's happening in the NBA and the NHL, uh, like the NHL, you can't even go in, in or out of Canada anymore. And the NBA is a daily protocol, 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 protocol. The NFL took the bold step to go the other way in two distinct ways. They have relaxed their testing and guidelines. Now, to be fair, they've increased the the guidelines and stiffened them for in-person and in-facility masking and so forth, to be fair. But today, Monday, there will not be the spike of 37 people there was last week because there is no league-wide mandatory testing anymore. That disappeared late last week. No more. It's voluntary testing, or what they call targeted testing. So unvaxxed and anyone with symptoms only. So we're not gonna have that 37 person spike. And that 37 person spike begat the next 35 because 87% of that 35 from last Tuesday were from the six enhanced protocol daily testing teams because there was a cluster. So that's how we got into that 37, 35, 30, 30, you know, huge numbers that caused the delays. Well, now the NFL has come out and said, uh, we're not gonna be chasing tests or asymptomatic tests. Uh, look, if you turn the clock back before the 2020 season, um, and they were chasing positives. I said, chasing positives isn't the way to go. It's getting the distancing within the building. The NFL is trying to do that. Look, one other thing to have out there, through almost the second season now, knock on wood once again, who knows what happens with variants and so forth. There hasn't been one case yet of on the field transmission one documented case yet. And so I think that's what the NFL is hanging its hat on in relaxing some of the testing protocols and trying to get these uh, games in. So uh, interesting, they're going in a different direction than other sports leagues in terms of the way they're hand handling things. And um, hopefully everything will, uh, will, will be just fine. Yeah, and one quick question, Doc. Is there any chance that the NFL has opted for this compared because they're at the end of their season, and they, I, I think it's funny the owners added an extra game in the middle of a pandemic. I don't know how smart that was, but they're just trying to get through the playoffs now, get to the Super Bowl, while other teams are more in the beginning to mid part of their season. Is that you think that plays anything into this? Well, I think it probably does, but it also plays into the NFL has always been ahead of the PR game on this in discussing and testing and doing other things and uh, providing the data. And, and I think Dr. Sills has done an overall a very, very good uh, job with things. And you know, what this also does is remember they were starting to be talk about playoff teams in a bubble. Well, mm -hmm. you don't need that now anymore. Now, one of the things they're still doing is vert all virtual meetings. The NFL is consistently in some ways They've done a nice public service teaching people how it happens. Like it's not from transiently tacking, tackling somebody that you get it. Uh, it's you're not going to get COVID typically by walking next to someone in the grocery store, you right. know, transiently. So last year when Stephon Gilmore hugged Patrick Mahomes after the end of the game at midfield, people freaked out because the next day Stephon Gilmore was positive. Yeah, and I wrote an article at the time saying. If Patrick Mahomes gets COVID from that Stefan Gilmore hug, the NFL should shut down the league and shut not it down. Play. Right? <laughs> He's not. That's not how it happens. And so I think the NFL is trying to do its best and, and manage what it can. As they say, it's where you it's meeting, greeting, and eating where most of the transition is. So it's all grab and go food. They're not meeting in person. They're masked. All, everyone's masked in the building now. So I think that's what they're figuring is the better precaution than continuing this testing and chasing thing. 
All right, well, we'll see how it works out, Doc. we got about a month and a half left of the season, so hopefully we can get through it and uh, without any big issues. Uh, make Everyone, make sure to go to sixscore.com. We will have matchups. We got... I think, Doc, we got games like every day this week, right? They had to move games all over the place. <laughs> we got games on Christmas Day where we got the regular Sunday. So we'll have plenty of stuff up at sixscore.com, all the all the six, uh, scores for all the teams, all the players, um, at ProFootballDoc on Twitter, and make sure to subscribe to all our YouTube videos. Hey, Doc, have a great holiday. We got one more podcast uh, in 2021, and then we're on to the new year. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, when I told my wife, you want the good news or the bad news this weekend? And she goes, all right, give me the good news. I said, there's only one game on Saturday. Yeah. And she's like, what's the bad news? Well, there's two on Monday and two on Tuesday now. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll be busy, but we'll, we'll make sure we'll, Doc will have all the injury breakdowns throughout the game. So make sure to check us out. Take care, Doc. Thank you.